Sometimes the only kits available for some of the planes we want to build have some pretty basic parts that don't really measure up to today's standards. It used to be that we were forced into scratch building parts or ordering aftermarket resin sets that can be expensive, assuming they were even available. Well, those days are in the rear view mirror as the availability and affordability of 3D printers is giving us modelers a whole new and powerful tool. In this video, I'll show you some quick and easy ways to create your own aftermarket parts that will turn your models into real showpieces. Sure, the initial investments can seem high, but when you think about the number of aftermarket parts that you won't need to buy, you'll see a very quick return on that investment. Welcome back to Flying S Models. I appreciate you tuning back in and apologize that it's been a little while since I've made any new videos. For the purpose of this little demo, I'll use Airfix's classic Fokker Friendship Kit. It's a decent kit, but it really screams out for some upgraded parts that just aren't available from other sources. I'll show you here how to simply design and print some upgraded main wheels that are far superior to what's provided in the kit. The software that I'm using is called Moment of Inspiration, or MOI. You can download a free 90-day trial version from the link that I'll post in the video description below. To get started, I'll drop a photo of the wheel and tire that I found online, as well as a set of scale plans that I can use to scale the aspect ratio of the wheel since I've only got the side view photo. In MOI, just click the View button and then click Add Image, and select the file or files you want to add. You can drop those photos or images into whichever view pane you would like and then scale them accordingly. Once the images are added, it's a matter of tracing the parts and then using the functions in the software to do all the rest of the heavy lifting. For making wheels and tires, the primary function that will be used is the revolve feature. This allows you to draw a profile of a solid object and revolve it around a particular axis to create a 3D solid. The first thing I like to do is draw some projection lines using the photo as a reference. These lines correspond to the various features that make up that wheel hub profile. Once I have them all projected, I use the polyline function to draw out a representative profile for the main wheel. When I have that completed, and I make sure it's a closed curve, I can revolve it to create that solid wheel hub. To check if you have a closed curve, just click on the curve and look at the box in the upper right, and it should say closed curve. This will make sure that a solid rather than a joined surface is created. You'll want that to be a solid in order to be able to join it with the tire and also to be able to print it. So to revolve the profile, just click on it and then click the revolve button. It'll ask you to pick a revolve axis and will obviously revolve it around the wheel's centerline axle. You can see that a solid wheel hub is created that closely matches the photo that we used as a reference. It looks pretty good, but I notice that there's a little bit of a slope transition inside the hub that I didn't create since I just made the profile out of a bunch of 90 degree angles. I'll go back and undo what I did to revolve the curve and then put in a little slope from the center part of the hub to about the midpoint by moving a few points and then using the fillet feature, choosing particular points and adding some filleted curves to the profile. There we go. Now we can rotate the new profile and check it out. Things look much better with these subtle curves added. Now we can start adding a few of the details like the lugs and inner hub detail before we create the tire. I just use the draw polygon function to draw a hexagon that we can then extrude to create a solid. I select that curve and use the extrude function to stretch it out into a solid lug nut. I then come back in and add a little of the wheel stud that will protrude out of the nut. I do this in the same way as I made that lug nut. 
just add a circle aligned to the center of the hexagon and then extrude it a little to create that feature. The two solids can now be unioned using the Boolean union function to create a single solid. Now we can move that lug nut over to the right spot on the wheel hub and then create the right number of them using the array function. When I get the lug nut in the spot I want, I simply click on array, pick the circular function, and then pick the wheel center point. MOI will ask how many copies you'll want, so we'll put in 18 that are seen in the reference photo. Hit enter, and there you go, 18 lug nuts and studs on the wheel hub. Now these are all individual solids, so you'll now have to go in and join them to the hub itself. That can be done, again, using that Boolean feature. I'll add a little more detail to the center hub by using the circle and trim tools to create curves that match the reference photo, and then extrude these and join them with the hub again, just like we did those lug nuts. Now let's add a little detail for the rear hub. I won't go too crazy here since these tires are doubled up on the axle, so you won't really see any of the detail if I were to add a lot to it. Just use the same process to create the curve and then revolve it. Now that we have the inner and outer hubs, we can join them together into one singular hub using the Boolean feature. I'll move and resize that hub over to the scale plan that I had imported just to compare it to the overall wheel and tire size and make sure it's not too thick as compared to the overall height. I think things look pretty good, so now let's go back and create the tire. This is a simple affair that involves drawing a tire profile curve, adding in some radial tread indentations, and then mirroring and joining the curve to create another closed curve that can be rotated around the axle centerline. The software has some pretty cool features that allow you to flow raised tread patterns onto the tire or even put in some raised sidewall lettering if you want to, but since we're talking 170 second scale here and this is a simple demo, I'll just skip the sidewall detail part. Once I've created a curve profile that I like that includes that radial tread pattern I want, I mirror that shape and join it into a single curve. I then connect those two curves with a straight line and join them all together to create that closed curve that I can revolve. By revolving the tire curve now around the hub axle, you'll get the tire as a separate solid object. Now just simply use the Boolean feature again and you'll have a single solid wheel and tire. Let's go back and compare it to the reference photo and make sure it's what we want. Yeah, I think things look pretty good. Now we just export the file to an STL file for printing. I'll increase the polygon count to make sure that I get more of a smooth surface when I get things printed. Now I open up the slicing software, import the wheel file, and get things ready to slice it for printing. It imported a little bit bigger than 172nd scale when I checked the dimensions in the software against the model kit part. So I'll just use the scaling features here to reduce it to a little less than a half an inch, matching the kit tire size. I'll make a few copies and then it adds some printing supports. I slice the file and then save it for printing. Now just load up the file into the printer, select the file you want and press go and let the printer do all the rest. This particular file will take about an hour to print based on the object size and the resolution I picked. In this case, I'm printing at a 7 micron resolution. Here's what the parts look like after taking them off the printer and washing and curing them in my wash and cure machine. And here's a comparison of the new wheel as compared to the original kit part. I think it's a major improvement. Let's give this wheel a quick painting so we can see how it will look when finished. 
I'll just spray a little Tamiya aluminum inside of the hub. And I follow that up by painting the tire with a little Vallejo acrylic flat black. Finally, I'll add a black oil wash just to highlight the details that were printed in the hub. Obviously, we could spend a little extra time with more detail painting and weathering, but I think you get the point here. I could also print with a finer resolution to capture the smaller details a little bit better as well. The new wheels really capture the look of the real aircraft far better than the toy-like wheels that are included in the kit. I hope this video helps you visualize some simple techniques used to make replacement or upgraded parts for your models and motivates you to give solid modeling and 3D printing a try. While the initial investment is a little high, for around $400 or less, you can get a great little printer and a wash and cure station. I'm confident, though, you'll be glad you made the investment once you start using the printer and seeing just how easy it is to design and print your own custom model parts. I appreciate you tuning back in to the Flying S Models channel. Make sure to leave me some feedback and let me know what you liked or didn't like about this particular video feature. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.